Um, fuck. Neuronymous. Hey boys and girls, this is Hal, back with an, way back, <laughs> it's been a long time, with another episode of Neuronymous. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it has been a long hiatus, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get you guys cu caught up with everything that's been going on. Uh, it's, been, it's been a rough month or two, um, really rough, and uh, I guess I've been too... You know that's what it, that's what addicts do. You know, and alcoholics, uh, we we uh, we isolate. You know, we isolate. We don't want to talk to anybody, and we don't want to show our faces to the world. We just want to hide and and cower in the corner, sometimes naked. I'm not a naked guy. I I like to have at least some some boxers on. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so let's just start with some good news because there isn't that much of that in this episode. So we might as well start with it um, because you know I, I'm 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 one of those kinds of you know good news bad news guys, and I figure if <laughs> the whole rest of the podcast is going to be a just complete shit show of negativity, let's open it up with some absolute amazing positivity that I'm very proud of. Uh, so on uh, July 18th. <clears throat> I got an email from Anuj uh, Agarwal. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He was the founder of Feedspot. And he emailed me to personally congratulate me that my 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 website or my podcast, Neuronymous, yeah, me, this, this show has been selected by their panelists as one of the top 10 bisexual podcasts on the web. You love me. You really love me. Um, no, it's 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 honestly. I mean, it, it's 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 a great honor. Uh, I was really really excited that that I, to be recognized. Um, you know, I never really set out to make this. A, you know, a a bi cat a, a bi po bisexual podcast is what I'm fucking trying to say. I never really set out to be that, but I mean, you know, if people are if if it's helping people. You know, whether it's, you know, helping people figure themselves out, come out to their, you know, family and friends, or learn to just, you know, just be, you know, come into their own, then that's, that's great. That's, again, the goal for this podcast is to help people, not, uh, you know, not, not just rain negativity and just, you know, hear my the sound of my voice although i do love the sound of my voice i think anybody you can you talk to will attest to that um <laughs> um so um so that's great that was amazing so thank you again anuj uh and feedspot for the recognition it's 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 truly an honor and i i really really uh really hope to continue making this show as long as I, as I'm able to I apologize to my f if I have fans fans and listeners for taking such a long hiatus but um like I said that's what that's what we addicts and alcoholics do best is isolate and I I need to I need to get out of that that mood so here I am here I am and uh I'm uh, you know I'm just really excited to be back um so let's just start with where things kind of left off. My wife and I, we went to Chicago uh, for our anniversary weekend. That that was that part was great. Okay, so there is a little bit more good news. Okay, we had a great time in Chicago. Um, you know, we went we went to some some great tourist sites like the Contemporary, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Contemporary um, Art Museum. That was a lot of fun. I love their gift shop. They have so many great books. Um, I, uh, did, you know, and we, and we just, you know, it was, it was a great trip because it wasn't rushed, you know what I mean? It was, it was one of those trips where you go there, you go to a few places, you, you take a break, you enjoy 
the silence. You enjoy the company of Aunt Alice, who is the just um, what an amazing hostess she was. I mean, she she just re- she recently lost her husband Alan, who was is just was an, an amazing man. The few times that I met him, I'm so glad to have had the honor to meet him and his and his wife Alice, who again was our our host was the consummate host and uh, let us stay there for the you know crash her place for few for several days and uh, you know and we went to see Second Story uh, uh, it's not Second Story uh, yeah no sorry yeah Second City we went and saw Second City uh, the comedy troupe that so many stars have come through you know from you know like you know Dan Aykroyd Gilda Radner you know. Uh, Chris Farley, you know, I think Mike Myers. I mean, just just a whole shitload of you know the cast members of SNL came from from Se- uh, Second City, and uh, you know, and uh, it, it was great. And I got a shitload of Blu-ray movies uh, due to the fact that I kicked ass at my uh, job at the Monolith with uh, 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 incentive that we had, so that was good too. So we, I, I actually do have. Good stuff to talk about today, so that's great. But as all things come to pass, there was a lot of a lot of bad stuff, uh, a lot of horrible stuff that happened. Um, I don't, I didn't talk about her a lot, but my uh, my cat Lily, um, I got her about twelve years ago, and she, I, I've had her longer than my wife. I always say. <laughs> And uh, she was like my daughter. I mean, it's, that's what it all comes down to. Is it, it, she's she was like my daughter. And uh, she, you know, um, last year she went missing uh, for about a week, and we found her. And uh, that was a week of just absolute terror. You know, as a as a parent, even if it's a fur baby, um, to lose a pet. Um, and when we caught her, it was this like utter euphoria that we were able to get her back. But ever after that, uh, I don't feel like she was ever really the same as far as her health. She just started losing weight constantly, and um, she uh, would sneeze a lot and lots of just health issues, uh, just constant loss of weight. Um, and then about a month ago, um, maybe a month and a half ago, uh, she got diagnosed with lymphoma. And two days after we got back from Chicago, so about uh, on June 18th, uh, we had to uh, say goodbye to her. And uh, what sucked? was that I was just bringing her in for a standard UTI uh, checkup, you know, just a follow-up. And, uh, you know, the thing is, like, she just sounded like death. I mean, every time she breathed in, it sounded, she sounded like Reagan from The Exorcist. It was like... <laughs> you know, and it, it was... It was tough. It was tough to listen to, and, you know, and I... And I and what's and it's weird because with cats there's you know with dogs they give you they they'll give you signs and let you know when it's when they're ready to go you know i mean it's it's they give you you know they if they stop doing you know they i i've heard if they stop doing like three of five things that they like or two of three things that they like then it's really it's 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 that time um but with cats it's there's a little bit more gray area because you know she was running around and happy and just you know and she just she'd still snuggle with me and curl up in my my uh lap and just you know did her thing and uh so on june 18th uh on tuesday uh we uh i called up amanda well my vet who is normally uh dr renee she at the minnesota valley pet hospital uh, new location at Adams Street, uh, on Adams Street, and, uh, <clears throat> she, um, came in, and she's usually really perky, and she just came in just looking very downtrodden and kind of gloomy, 
Um, and I knew, uh, and I said to her, you know, what's, what do we do here? I mean, what's the best course of action? I mean, is it, do you think it's time? And she just looked at me and she was like, I, if you were to, you know, uh, say goodbye to her, I, I would support that, you know, not in so many words, uh, not in the same words, but I would, I would probably say it's, it's, it's that, it's, it, it's that time I would support that decision. And so we did. And uh, I'm going to try not to get emotional. Um, we put her uh, on a blanket on my lap. And Amanda came in. Uh, she left work. And uh, she uh, she was sobbing because she's, she's just the, the optimist the whole time, saying she's fine, she's running around, she's still happy, you know, and... And she just came in and just started apologizing, saying that she was sorry for being so optimistic. And um, and I said, you have nothing to be sorry for because, you know, like, there's nothing wrong with being optimistic, you know? Like, we, you know, it gave us just that extra time to, you know, to those extra moments that we need, you know? And uh, so with that, uh, Dr. Renee put the injected her uh, and... Uh, sent her to uh the 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 pet heaven uh and uh i hope you know the end of the rainbow bridge as they say i hope i will find her again at the end of the at the other at the end of the rainbow bridge um i'm gonna miss her um i do miss her um every night she would um jump onto the bed and crawl into my lap uh, and s curl up and, and sleep, and uh, I don't have that anymore. I don't have that um, that weight on my uh, on my lap, um, letting me know that she's there. And Amanda suggested, you know, maybe putting like a, a bag of, of like dry rice or something like that, or bean, you know, a bean bag in my lap. And I was just like, no, it's just not the same. It's not the same. And uh, so so that happened. Um, and uh, I just, I don't know. I. It's not that I wanted to rush to get another. I didn't want to rush it, you know. But I also realized that I needed something that I could love and, and replace. And, ja and I love Jasper. I love my my little man Jasper. He but he's he's just a mess sometimes, <laughs> and he attacks everybody um, because he just he, we're we rescued him and he we th he thinks that we saved his life and we're protecting him and we're his saviors and he thinks everybody is out to kill us so therefore in kind he's out to kill them so, <laughs> um, but my wife walks dog regularly at benches uh, the the. <clears throat> Blue Earth, uh, Nicolet County Humane Society. She walks dogs there regularly and sees a lot of the, the dogs that come in and the cats that come in. And, um, you know, I, I don't think we, I don't know if we were ever, if we were looking for a dog or not. I know Amanda at one point said that she wanted, you know, like maybe a female dog that would chill Jasper out, you know. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, and uh, she... Sends me a text saying uh, on a sun on a Saturday, basically saying uh, there's a dog here, a transport from Texas, who is visually impaired, malnourished, uh, has uh, like you know she she you know she, we don't know how if she's gonna make it you know or not um, you know and she can barely walk and and I I just said to Amanda I said you know what let me. Let me come and see. And Amanda was like, I don't think that's a good idea. She'll break you. And I'm like, what, is she a big dog? I mean, and she was like, no, she's a Shih Tzu. I said, so what do you mean she should break me? Is she like physically, emotionally? I mean, I, I know I have a bad back, but, you know, come on. Um, and she's like, no, she'll break you emotionally. And um, <clears throat> I said, why do you say that? And she goes, her name is Lily. And it was spelled exactly the same way as I spelled my Lily, L-I-L-L-I-E, 
which is a really kind of unique way of spelling it. Uh, I named my cat after the lead at uh, heroin in my uh, first screenplay, um, Dead to Me. Um, and uh, so I said, you know what, honey? Um, I don't think I could be any more broken than I already am. So she was like, all right, come on down. You know, come see her. And I did, and I looked at her, and she could barely walk. and But she still had just a little bit of fight in her, I could tell, you know. And, um, you know, she her teeth are rotted out, so her tongue hangs out a lot of the time. Um, like, I guess the... the the vet said if she was a cruel per a cruel person, which you know, vets are not cruel people. I, I honestly think vets are actually really awesome people. Um, I should have been a vet, but I don't think I could handle, you know, doing what they do with with animals. Um, you know, injecting them, uh, you know, putting them to sleep, that kind of thing. But I I I love. I think vets are amazing people. Um, <clears throat> uh, so. But the vet said if she was cruel, she could easily put her hand in uh, this dog's mouth, and who's 11, by the way, uh, so she's an old broad, um, <clears throat> and she could easily just pluck out a tooth. That's how bad it was. She, her teeth are just rotted out. And I just, I, we took her outside, and I watched her walk and trip and walk and get up and trip and walk again. And I said to Amanda, I said, Honey, nobody's gonna adopt this dog. This is us. This is we need. This is our. This is our dog. So the next day, we agreed uh, that we would take her home. And I just I said, but we're gonna rename her. <laughs> so we renamed her Bailey. Bailey B. We named her. She's net. So she's, and um, and uh, she is. Uh, I think eight pounds, at this point, and uh, but and she's slowly but surely she she's gonna be on gabapentin, probably for the rest of her life. Um, it puts her puts her out pretty quick, <laughs> but uh, she's she's just absolutely. She's the light of my life. She's such a daddy's little daddy's girl. Um, and but uh, yeah, so we we took her home, and uh, she cannot sleep in the bed because if she fell off, she she could really hurt herself. She's fallen down the steps once, but she still managed to be okay. Um, it was probably like me when I was on Ambien and I fell down the steps this one time, and I just was totally okay. Probably because I was just so relaxed. It's probably the same situation. Like like daughter likes like like father like daughter right so um except I don't she was she Bailey was not on <laughs> was not on Ambien at the time um and then um you know and so she's just been my little uh, partner in the office when I'm working you know and uh, she sometimes she'll be on my lap um and uh, we just en each enjoy each other's company and. Uh, it's great. I, I know that I'm saying uh and a lot of vocal fillers in this one, but it's been a long time and I'm just not. Uh, there we go again. <laughs> it's, 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 I have to get in, back into the swing of this. You have to excuse me. Uh, so, anyway, so we, now we have Bailey and she's our, she's our little girl and um, I have decided, I've been, I'm on a lot of meds. Uh, psych meds and one of them is Seroquel and it knocks me the fuck out every night and I and for the, like the longest time I was always like excited about it was like my favorite part of the night was like I would just sink into oblivion you know like I would finally be that anxiety you know, that my whole mess of uh, ahead you know the, the hamster wheel would just turn off and I would just slip into oblivion and the thing is it, it happens while Lily, uh, fuck, oops, Bailey is in my lap, and I, you know, and I let, and I love to read before I go to bed, and I ha and I just haven't been able to read, you know, because we upped, I don't know if we upped the Seroquel or what, but I just realized, 
You know, it's like that Aerosmith song. I don't want to miss a thing. And the thing is, I don't, I don't want to miss things anymore. I don't want to, like, pass out. I want to be able to read. I want to watch Bailey. Because technically she's, um, she's a phosphorus dog. Um, or a palliative care uh, dog. Uh, they, she may have a tumor or a lesion on her spine, which affects her motor coordination. So we don't know how long she has. She could be... It could be months, or she could be with us for another few years. We don't know. So we, I, I don't want to miss any moments with her, because I love her so fucking much. Uh, so yeah, Bailey is fantastic, and I'm just so blessed that I was able to be strong enough and not break, uh, and, uh, and, and just, I'm glad that we are... Yay, yes! I'm glad that we are the, you know, empathetic, you know, sympathetic, and just, you know, good. I like to think that we're, we're good people, Amanda and myself. I mean, we're not, um, you know, we're not saints by any means. I mean, like, I don't think saints say fuck as much as we do. Um, Mother Teresa, I'm fairly certain, although she had, you know, d you know, like I said, falling dicks in, in a previous podcast, you know, around her. Um, you know, she, you know, uh, you know, I don't think Mother Teresa said fuck a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty, fairly certain she did not. Okay. I could be wrong on the whole fuck thing, but I'm pretty sure she did not say fuck as much as Amanda and I. So therefore we are probably not saints. Um, so anyway... Um, moving on, uh, a good friend of mine is, uh, in the program, uh, his name is, uh, Terry Dabalair, uh, he passed away, he was a, a sponsor of mine at one point, um, in one of the 12-step programs that I belong to, um, it didn't last very long, um, he, uh, I would, I don't think I'd be the first person to say that. We clashed a little bit um, as far as how our programs went, but an amazing man, and I'm, I'm sorry to hear that he, he passed. Um, you know, but at least from what I heard, he was at peace when it happened, so that's, may his memory always be for a blessing. Um, and uh, we went to Omaha. Yes, we went to Omaha for my 20th high school reunion. Fuck. Um, and yeah, I mean, I had actually, I actually had people like coming up to me and saying, uh, they listen to, they listen to Neuronymous. They listen to our, po our podcast, my podcast, and it was great. And I'm just so excited. Uh, it, you know, and it's, it's just, it's good to know that, again, it's great to know that people are listening and, you know, and, um, I had, uh, I got to bump into people that I hadn't seen for 20 years, uh, and then just some friends that I, I wouldn't say it's 20 years, but I mean, like, we see each other, saw each other off and on, and he and I were, like, just best friends, uh, in, uh, you know, in high school, and he's, I still consider him a best friend of mine, he was a groomsman at my wedding, hey, Russ, uh, and Lynn, so good to hear, see you guys, and, uh, Dallas still owes me my queerest folk. DVDs, just putting that out there, but yeah, uh, it was very, it was great seeing you guys at my parents' house, you know, for a visit, and it was great seeing Derek, and Callie, um, and Levi, if you're listening to this, I don't know if you listen to my podcast, but it, uh, it was great seeing you, thank you for putting on such an amazing, uh, reunion, uh, getting it all set up, um, I, it was, it was a blast, you know, I, I didn't, you know, but, Something happened on while we were there, and it really, really pissed me the fuck off. Um, my it was my mom's birthday, so I we didn't my wife and I didn't say anything. It was definitely not a great trip at my parents, but we were we were sitting on the couch, and my mom was talking to my cousin Pam, who is now a diehard conservative, and <laughs> and basically, she uh, my mom recommended the movie Green Book, which is a, an amazing movie about racism. And um, Pam goes, what is, well, what's it about? And uh, my mom goes, oh, it's about racism. And, my, and, and Pam goes on to say, racism? 
there is no racism in America. My mom was like, yeah, they they wouldn't know a concentration camp if they hit it if, if it hit them. And I just Amanda and I were like, what? There are fuck. There are concentration camps in Texas right now. I mean, there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's happening, people in America. There are concentration camps in different states in this in this country, you know. And the KKK is back in you know and and just completely revitalized, and you know and just they're they're out there doing their fucking thing, you know, like. How is there not racism in America? I, I don't get how people could, could even fucking say that. And then th- what she said next really fucking hurt because uh, apparently all my cousins are having kids and, you know, they're like, you know, they're... And, you know, good for them. Good for them. I'm glad they're having kids. You know, it's good that our family is growing. Their families are growing. You know, I have nothing but love for them and, and support and, you know, congrats, you know, congrats to them. But... My my cousin Pam says, "When are you know when are Hal and Amanda gonna have kids? They really need to get on top of that." And my mom goes like, "Well, they're still working on the adoption." And my I hear my Pam go, ah! and I, you know like it, like we're not trying hard enough. And I'm just like, you know what? Fuck you, Pam. You know like seriously like we are doing our goddamn best. You know we can't. You know what? We are we can't have kids." You know, and we're not going to have kids. We're probably never going to have kids um, as far as biologically. It's just not in the cards. You know what? And our, our, right now our dogs, those are our kids. Those are our kids. And what really hurt, you know, it, it is just like when she like questioned the, like the fact that how hard we're trying on the adoption. You know what? It's a waiting game, and it's not easy, and we are, we're doing our best, and, um, yeah. And what, the other thing that really hurt, a lot of things hurt that weekend. I'm just not, I'm just gonna put the cards on the table, uh, is that my dad refused to hold, uh, Bailey. He wouldn't have anything to do with her. He, like, it was like, he, he went out of his way to not acknowledge her, and I'm just like... And I and I and I think I have an idea why he was against us getting Bailey um, from the beginning because she's eleven years old and she's an old dog and we may be in the same position that we were with Lily, in a, whether it be months or years, you know. And you know, and the thing is, we're okay with that. We're okay with that. We want to give this dog the best life it's never had, the best quality of life. Okay. And and for my dad not to even acknowledge this this bundle of joy, who's aren't basically to us, she's like a newborn, you know, because she's she's learning how to walk again, she's learning how to eat. I mean, it's basically like she's learning how to live again for as long as it as she can, as long as she's and she's a fighter. I mean, she's starting to run and sprint and do all kinds of cool, great things. Yeah. And the other thing that hurt was that the fact that I could not even acknowledge to my parents the fact I, I, I told them about the uh, being in the top ten you know podcasts and I, I, I my my sexuality is not a talking point with my parents I don't talk about it with them I it's one of those things where it's like we don't you know it's swept under a rug you know and I and I. To everybody else in this whole fucking world, I'm out and proud and bisexual. But with my parents, we don't talk about it, and it's just, it's hard. It's hard. So my, I said, yeah, I got, you know, voted number eight in a certain, a certain niche uh, in a top ten list on the web. And my dad was like, what kind of niche? And I was like, uh, and then the cha- subject was quickly changed. Okay, that happened. So, um, and then at dinner time, like, you know, my mom was like, we we went to this really expensive restaurant, amazing food. It's called 801 Chop House. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's downtown. It's, it's very spendy. Like the, like the cheapest entree was like 36 bucks. I mean, yeah. And (laughs) we, uh, you know, and my mom was like, we're ordering 
Like, and we were like, "What? What the fuck do you mean we're ordering? You you can't just say we're order that you that you're ordering for us. We're in a goddamn twelve step program for overeating, for God's sakes. We have certain foods that we have to eat, certain amounts of food, certain proteins, certain veggie amounts of veggies. You know, this, that, and the other. And like, and so finally, my wife was just like, she she laid it down. She's like, Mom or Lisa." You, it's not very inviting when you say when you tell somebody that they're you know you you're you, that we're their guests for dinner for her birthday and that they're ordering for us whether we like it or not it's just not inviting so um, we have, Amanda and I did eventually order you know they basically said all right a hundred dollars you get a hundred dollars to spend um, <clears throat> and so yeah. That was it was great. So the food was great anyway. I don't I don't know about the rest of it, <laughs> but uh, so anyway, again the the reunion and the was great and the seeing friends was great as always. Oh, and then fucking Tuesday happened. Um, <clears throat> we get a call from the adoption agency. <laughs> I have this cough. I don't know what's going on, but like it's been going on for like. Like um, at least a month now. It's it's not like, it's not like you know I'm sick, but it's like I've got this weird like smoker's cough, and I don't smoke. I don't know what it's what it's doing, why it's doing that. But anyway, uh, we get a call from the adoption agency, and our new adoptive co- counselor, Liz, is like, and, and I, had, I was off of work because I had had a panic attack because over everything that had happened with my parents and you know I couldn't get the pill my dog to eat her you know Lily uh, God ugh, it's gonna be tough Bailey to eat her medicine and um, I just I don't know I just broke down after, with all these emotions and just anxieties and you know I so I took a, a Xanax and and my back and I th- I've thrown my back out somehow um and, uh, yeah, so I fell asleep after taking a Xanax, which, you know, I take it as prescribed when I have an anxiety attack. Um, and I wake up to this call from our adoption agency, and it's Liz, our, our new adoptive parent counselor, saying that, you know, she's like, basically, are you sitting down? You know, and I was like, well, I'm laying down, basically, but I can get up and get a piece of paper and a pen. She's like, yes, get a piece of paper and a pen. They, and basically they went on to say that they had an emergency placement, which is like, you know, when the baby's ready to go, you know, and and they need uh, they need parents quick. <laughs> and there was an, apparently another family involved that was that the birth mother was really interested in, but she was looking for somebody that was nerdy and real and basically us, Amanda and I, to a T. And this, it was basically, it seemed like it was being implied that we were kind of like a shoe in and that this is kind of a, you know, a, 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 not a sure thing because it's, you know, it's never a sure thing, you know, but it was, it was about as close to a sure thing as you could get, you know, <clears throat> and we said, yes, we'd like to, pers- you know, to pursue it. And we were under the impression that we were given the impression that she wanted to meet with us or both families or if she, you know, we don't know if the other family had decided that they were going to pursue it too, but, you know, she apparently wanted to meet us and, <clears throat> and within the next 48 hours and within 72 hours, we could possibly be parents because she turned the baby over to a transitionary home, uh, tra- uh, and, and was very distraught about it. And she didn't want to meet, she did not want to meet the next day. She wanted some time to process things. And little did the, her liaison, uh, her birth mother counselor know, was that she found uh, the text message to the other family and started texting with them and basically said, I choose them. We didn't even get a chance. Nothing. And after all that, I mean, like, we, like, it was basically, like, the baby was healthy, like, this is, like, snap, 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 gonna happen, you know, like, and our expectations were extremely raised by our birth mother counselor or adoptive parent counselor. Sorry, uh, and you know, and and it, you know what 
bless her heart, she meant well. She, I mean, she, when she told us that the other family got picked, she was on the verge of tears. So I can't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna knock her. She's this. She's a, a lovely, lovely woman. But it was just another. It was another heartbreak, and I, you know, she was like. We didn't know. I really thought this was the one, and she tried convincing the birth mother's counselor to see if she'd be at least willing to talk to us, and she refused because she just wanted to move on with her life. And that's okay. That's her right. That's her right to do that, okay? But that doesn't take the pain away of having something placed outside our hands and just and just yanked away just beyond our grasp you know again and to be honest I th I think I think I'm done with the adoption agency I, I mean I'm not I'm not gonna say that I can't say that for sure but I don't know if I really want to renew at this point when it, when it comes time to renew <clears throat> I think I think we've had it all wrong this whole time, you know, and um, I think we've been on our on, on our minds. We've been th between all the you know fertility treatments and adopt close calls with adoption, you know, and 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 just the whole adoption process. We've been wanting, you know, it's been baby, 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 baby on our minds, and what really should have been on our minds is. Family, 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 family. Okay? And, you know, the truth of the matter is we may never have children. You know, it may not happen. It may not be in the cards. I would, I mean, and does it break my heart? Yeah, it breaks my heart because I think it'd be a good dad. I think it'd be a really good dad. But you know what? I am a good dad. And we do have a family. We, you know, they may not be human. But they are our children, our dogs. They are our children, and uh, and 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 we are doing our best to be parents to them, and you know, teach them right from wrong. I guess if you want to call it that, and uh, feed them, give them shelter, and love them the best we can, and raise them the best we can. That is that is what we do. That is what a family, how a family works. And the other thought I have is, like I said, baby, baby, baby. Well, you know what? There are other there are other avenues here, folks. There are other kids in the system. They may not be babies, but there are kids in the system that need a forever home. They need love and attention, and they've been hurt, and they've been had the uh, you know. The opportunity to have a family yanked away from them just like us and you know what we maybe that's our calling maybe that's our calling is to you know take in these people on the fringe or animals on the fringe and give them homes and make their lives okay and and make them happy and raise them and again teach them right from wrong and just have a family you know, it's so easy to have, I mean, for some people to have a baby and, and start from ground zero. It's it's a lot harder to start a family. You know, I haven't seen the movie, but I really actually want to see this family called Instant Family with Mark Wahlberg and I think Rachel Byrne. Um, um, but anyway, um, so yeah, as I've said, it is a rough month rough two months and I'm sorry that I have not um been talking to you guys I need this this has been a really good therapeutic episode for me but the thing I want to talk what last thing I want to talk about is this like when we were given the the news that there was going to be there's a potential baby for us we Amanda panicked and freaked out like you know what you know how are we gonna afford this we just got a, a new puppy what's gonna happen what if you know we you know what if we can't afford it you know what if we go bankrupt 
And my friend Derek said three words, God will provide. A few people said that, God will provide. You know what? I got a beef with God. I've got a beef with my higher power. I'm not trying to, you know, and I'm not trying to knock the people, the believers out there. I mean, if you believe, if that's what you believe, that's great. And, you know, I am grateful for what I have. But you know what? You know what God's provided me with in the last five years? Confusion, heartbreak, anguish, uh, sadness, uh, confusion again, heartbreak, uh, anger, and just po- uh, occasional hallucinations, of, uh, you know, of, of grandeur uh, and heartache. That's what God's provided me. And I, you know, and I know we're supposed to, in the programs, we're supposed to have a higher power. And maybe, and I do, I'm sure I do. I know I have a higher power, but right now I got a beef with him or her. I think she's binary, so they. I've got a beef with them because what the fuck? I go through the, we, we go through this life and I really don't want to think that we're all just, you know, I'm going to get existential here, that we, we're just here to exist and just bump into, each, you know, random things bumping into each other, random events, random people, you know, and I don't, I don't want to believe that, but it's all I can think of is that nothing is meant to be. Nothing is meant to be. So maybe God, you know, God will provide, but right now God has provided me nothing, and I am trying, I am trying so fucking hard to live, to live and be happy and learn to be okay with being sad and angry and 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 being able to laugh at things and just go about my life and sometimes it's hard man it's so fucking hard but as always we got to do it we got to do it and we got to live it we got to live life we got to live it one day at a time Yes.